Hey all, it's Rob here again with another review. This time I've got the Beitong Asura Pro 2 Nearlink. Now this is the one of a few versions of Asura 2 that you can get. Only the US and Chinese markets have the 2000 Hz polling rate version, which is this one, and it only comes in this colorway. The other markets, such as in the UK, can't find this one. Uh, it doesn't list it as for sale on either their website or the Amazon store. So that's a bit strange. Maybe it will be coming soon. I'm not too sure yet. Uh, this was sent direct from China by Beitong for review. And there are a couple of things I do like about it, but there's also a lot of things I don't like. So I think the scales kind of weigh more on the negative side than the positive side. And I'll talk about so those things in a, in a moment. So what you have is a 2000 hertz out of the box so you don't need to tweak anything or change anything to get the full 2000 hertz and it's 2000 hertz both wide and wireless the wireless dongle goes into or you can store it inside this little flap here you kind of slide it out first annoyance that flap it's really hard unless you've got a lot of friction in your fingers it's really hard to get that flap open so i'm just going to try that now just to get it open because i have got the dongle in there at the moment so you can see how difficult it is. So I'm gonna grip it, grip the grip with my right hand. I am right-handed. And I try and, yeah, so it's just popped out there. Normally, if your fingers are quite slippery, if you don't have any sort of friction on there, it's, it's really hard to pop that out. But I have found if you press really hard against it there, and it does open up. And it's, but it's quite annoying. On a cold day, it'll be much more difficult. The second difficulty is getting the dongle out so it's in there but you can't just press it and it pops out there's no mechanism in there to do that you have to unless you've got some really long nails which i don't have you have to use the um the flap and just wedge it in there and try and pop it out and you do get it afterwards and then it just pops out and that is the uh the dongle it's quite small sort of like the size of logitech's unifying receiver or the bolt receiver so very compact, which is nice. And it's nice that there is a feature like this to store it in there. Because normally with wireless controllers, if you take it between different machines or take it around a mate's house or whatever to play games, you need to carry this around separately in your pocket, maybe lose it at some point and so on. So it's nice that there's a means to store it there on board. Don't know why more controllers don't do something like that. So that's a that's a nice touch. Credit where due. That's, that's cool. I'm just going to put the flap back on. This um, top fascia finish, it's... As it plays with the light, that pearlescent finish is, is very nice. I like that a lot. And I kind of like the aesthetics as well. The green caps on the sticks. Uh, the way the home button shimmers in the light as well. The color, styling, and the translucency of the D-pad buttons. Let's just... Sorry, the ABXY buttons. Zoom in on that. Now, those buttons are not RGB. But um, they do look cool all the same. It's sort of like a tint, very similar to what the game sir tarantula over there is like on their sticks. Uh, I've got a review of that as well. I've also got the PB Tails, which is zoom out of it, PB Tails Crush Defender. That's one of 999. There's a review of that. I'll put both review links in the description below. But um, in terms of the Asura Pro 2, yeah, um, two things I do like about it. The storage for the uh, compartment for the usb receiver and the paint job and sadly yeah as i was saying that's about where the positives kind of end the 2000 hertz polling rate is consistent the latency is or the polling rate latency sorry that registers good in software i'll uh, run through some of that in a moment uh the mechanical abxy feel really good there's no excess travel when pressing so one, once it bottoms out it's completely solid. So they do sound and feel really good. Just like on the uh, Easy SMX X10 and some of the Game Sir Cyclone Pros that I've had. These feel really good. I like that. Uh, so three things I like about it, actually. ABXY mechanical switches, the paint job, and the compartment. The triggers, there's no lockout for the triggers. And when they bottom out, so that's that's the end, that's bottomed out. But if I press it in, there's a lot of post travel, which I don't like. And it feels really spongy at the end as well. So it's, it doesn't really inspire confidence. And they're a bit, can you hear that? 
It's a bit clicky. So that's kind of annoying and it happens on both. So there's no solid end. There's no rubber stopper at the end, which is solid. So if I get the, let's use this one as an example, the Nixie Master P1. There's a review of this as well. I'll put a link to all of them in the description. So when the triggers aren't locked out on this, this is a 38 pound controller or 39, $40, something like that. So this is bottoms out and there's no additional travel. And it's a solid stopper at the end. So it's damped or it's got a rubber stopper. And this feels really good. And as I say, you can lock this out as well. And it's a mechanical mouse click switch, KL switch for the lockout. So that's really good. So using it for emulation or on switch, you've got that covered. Uh, this does have six axis gyro as well, uh, only available in switch mode. So only when connected to a switch. And the shoulders are clicky membrane. The same pressure wherever, which is nice. All of the other buttons, all the accessory buttons are membrane. And again, these are spongy too, including the home button. The silicon caps are okay. They're not amazing. Not the best quality I've seen. They're quite slippery, similar to the silicon caps on the Master P1. Whereas on the GameSir Tarantula, the silicon caps are much more grippier. There's more friction on those and they feel just like on the PlayStation DualSense and DualShock 4s and so on. So they've nailed that. They're a bit thicker as well, so they feel really good uh, against the thumbs. The D-pad, I'm not too much of a fan of. It's kind of small, similar to the Nixie and other GameSir controllers, but the GameSir Tarantula Pro Plus, I'll just bring that over, the D-pad is much bigger and this is proper mechanical as well. And this is way more comfortable. I actually prefer this to any other D-pad on any other controller I've used or owned in the last 18, 24 months. So that was really nice to see. Um, but this, it's it sticks out a bit and it's a bit rounded and it just, for some reason, it doesn't have a quality feel to it. And the other thing is when you are pressing one direction and you wiggle up and down, you do activate the other corner, the other directions as well. So you can have false presses of up and down, or if you're pressing down and you wiggle or you're moving the control around, you can activate left and right. So you'll activate a diagonal as well, which you may not want to be doing, especially if you're in a fighting game or a directional game and you suddenly start looking up or if you're on a platformer, you'll jump forwards, for example, if you're pressing right and accidentally wiggle it to the top. So that's annoying. And there's no central rocker, so I think that's probably why. Or the D-pad membrane, the track is shared. So because there's no rocker, rocker, there's no isolation like on a proper mechanical switch, for example, on the game, sir, um, when you press a direction, you can't wiggle it and activate one of the other directions. So there is that to consider as well. So this might be an annoyance for some. The sticks themselves, they're hall effect and the triggers hall effect as well. There is a bit of latency response to them. So I will, if I load up, uh, let's see, joystick test is probably the best one to, uh, to use for that. So let's just open that up. I'll plug in the dongle. And it connect quick, which is uh, nice. The vibration's very good on this as well. It's quite a strong rumble. So if I open, that let's focus on the screen and let's get a little closer still okay so we're going to focus on the screen and just keep an eye on is the left stick that's active So we have got 1322 hertz polling rate. So it varies between 1300, uh, 1300 hertz and around about 1700 hertz is what I've seen. Some other apps will register the full 2000 hertz. Others will be 1900 hertz. So I think it's variable, which is fine. We kind of expect that even with a thousand hertz polling rate controllers, you do, it does vary between 800 and 900 hertz, 950 hertz other times. So that's normal. I think it's variable just to conserve power and so on because you don't always need the full 2000 hertz. So that's expected, which is fine. 
Now the latency that I was on about was when you snap back, for example, I'm going to pull it back and just let go. There is latency to that. There is a delay before that happens. So that's a bit annoying to see, but that's fairly typical of Hall Effect sticks anyway. So there is a bit of over-processing going on. And as you can see by the circle, they are fake circles and there's no way to turn that off. Now there may be a way to turn that off and get raw mode by installing this or running the software. I haven't run the software because Beitong don't don't provide the software through an app store like on Google Play or Apple Store or via the Microsoft Store on Windows. It's a separate zip file you download and that zip file contains an EXEs. And my antivirus suites that I normally use whenever I download anything, they did flag up several uh, malware and sort of hijackers and so on. They may well be false positives, but it doesn't inspire you with confidence when you get something like that. So, you know, I, I trust Beitong, but at the same time, I'm not going to be running some random zips with EXEs inside just to get my controllers to work, especially once uh, two different Jotty virus total have flagged up the, uh, the zip file itself. So that's kind of unnerving, uh, kind of annoying in a way as well. Uh, even with full 2000 hertz, these sticks do have that snapback latency. So... That's kind of annoying. Oh, that's the other thing that I don't like as well. So to turn it off, normally on every other controller, you hold the home button for a few seconds and it turns off. On this, you have to hold the shift button and the back button, sorry, and B, and that turns off. So why, I don't know. Holding the home button doesn't actually do anything from what I can tell. So TMR sticks are the future in terms of stick latency. So I'm just gonna use that. And we're going to connect to that and we'll just get that going and we'll do the exact same again and just watch the uh, the cursor instant snapback. So when moving these TMR sticks around, it includes the PB tiles because they both use uh, K-Silver TMR sticks. It feels like a mouse when you're moving around. It's just so responsive and so smooth and there's no sort of magnetic resistance or anything like that it's just instantly it goes wherever you put it so tmr sticks are definitely the future and i hope more manufacturers start using tmr sticks because at the moment gullikit have their uh, custom sticks that you can retrofit into your existing console controllers but they don't have a controller out yet with um, tmr sticks already from the factory third party one that you can use on pc and stuff so GameSir and PBTels are the only ones that have these uh, sticks and yeah, they are my favorite sticks at the moment. So this is my go-to controller for everything. Let's just put that back and go back to the Asura Pro. Yeah, so it's not great. The mechanical buttons are the highlight of the controller really, the paint job in that compartment. The USB cable that comes with it, it's nothing special. Again, it's quite cheap. It's not braided or anything like that either. So that's kind of annoying. The sticks themselves, as I've mentioned, they are quite, I mean, they are silicone, they are, they do have grip, but they're not as grippy. They're quite slippery compared to the game, sir. The D-pad, I've mentioned the flaws in the D-pad. The wireless polling rate, you've seen that already here. So just running GamePad LA. Now, GamePad LA is a synthetic test, so most people don't really use it. Take, take the results with a pinch of salt, but I use it as a baseline comparison when you're comparing multiple controllers against each other even though the results are synthetic or the measurements are synthetic, you still get a good baseline of what each controller compares to one another. And this has been really good for, for that. So I use it as a baselining tool rather than anything else. Joystick tester is used for actual measurements and stick testing and so on. So we're going to connect to the game, um, not the game sir dongle, 2000 Hertz. And we'll do the right stick this time. Here we go. So I think GamePad LA actually registers only 1000 hertz max for this for some reason. 89%. Um, the latency numbers are really good though. So good controller. It, it looks good. And the 2000 hertz is legit. But the sticks have too much latency. The triggers have too much of a spongy feel. There's no trigger lockout. There's no back button lockout. Uh, also listen to this. 
the back buttons are very loud and quite annoying. There's also post-click travel on this more than I would prefer. So it feels like if I press it too hard, it's going to cave in. So that's also annoying. The shoulder buttons are fine. You know, no issues with that at all. And the back buttons can only be remapped to actual face buttons. So actual action buttons on the key on the controller itself. So no keyboard actions or anything like that that you can on the tarantula. So there is that to consider as well. The D-pad's flaky. It's not my uh, not my favorite one. By comparison, the Nixie P1 has proper mechanical D-pad, and this feels very good. I really like that. You can wiggle and hit some of the actions uh, directions when clicking one, but it's way better than the um, Asura Pro 2. So this is more what you expect from a mechanical D-pad. Whereas on here, you've got those accidental clicks, you've got a weird feeling D-pad, no central rocker, sticks, nothing special. Um, but yeah, as I say, for the price, I would have expected better quality. Another thing to note is the seam where the top face plate meets the bottom on this uh, you can feel this seam it's not perfectly flush so when holding it i can feel it under my palm and fingers as well if i'm gripping it here like that so that again it's a quality control issue uh, maybe all of them are like this but it doesn't feel like something that should cost 50 dollars so yeah i would not i'd say this is more of a 20 pound controller in terms of how it feels and some of the other quirks, sort of oversights with the triggers and sponginess of all the buttons and so on. It's too expensive, and I think you're paying that premium for the 2000 hertz. But then again, if you've got latency on the sticks, then it kind of defeats the objective of having 2000 hertz. You want 2000 hertz because you want to get that full performance out of those sticks, but Hall Effect probably isn't the best stick technology to use for 2000 hertz. TMR sticks would be perfect for it, but even at 125 hertz, which is what the PV Tiles Defender is at the moment, that beats this at 2000 hertz. So 125 hertz TMR versus 2000 hertz Hall effect, and that beats it in terms of latency in the same snapback test. So that kind of puts into perspective, and obviously the tarantula is 1000 hertz over wireless as well. So yeah, that is no contest really. And these controllers. The Tarantula especially, you can get that for $60, I think, for the non-stand version. So instead of paying $50 for this, $10 more, or $10, $15 more, you get a superior controller. Let's grab that again. A superior controller, every single button, all of these buttons can be remapped to do anything you want with the GameSet Connect software through the Windows Store. Even keyboard actions and shortcuts and macros and so on. Mechanical D-pad, that feels amazing. The sticks being symmetrical, they're actually closer to your palms, so you actually use it. It feels much nicer, like a PlayStation DualShock controller, and everything is just super premium about it. And obviously you've got the trick of the uh, switchable ABXY. So yeah, I can't really review, uh, give this a good review score. I mean, it's probably a 5 out of 10, maybe 4. Five is a push, I'd say. It's four out of ten. It's too expensive for what it is. There's a lot of oversights that should not exist at this price, given controllers that cost half as much don't have those issues. There's no customization. There's no lockouts for the paddles or for the triggers. Um, there's no mechanical switches for the shoulders, which would have been nice to have, or the D-pad. It's just clicky membrane. Um... Yeah, so there's latency with the sticks, and there's no way to turn off the fake circle there, circularity on the sticks either. So yeah, it's not great, to be honest with you. It's a nice looking controller, by all means, you know, that paint job is cool, I, I give them that. And I like the compartment where you can store the, uh, the dongle when not in use. But other than that, and the ABXY mechanical, I can't really recommend this controller to anyone. I'd say you're far better off getting the Nixie Master P1. 500 hertz over wired only though, and 125 hertz over wireless 2.4 gig. And the dongle that they give is comedy sized. So take a look at that. It's like a USB stick. 
which is kind of hilarious. Uh, you also get a braided USB cable with it, a proper braided cable, which is lightweight and nice. So that you don't get with, you don't even get that with the Tarantula Pro, to be honest with you. But then again, if you're buying the Tarantula Pro, you might get the stand version, which you don't really need to worry about the cable. So okay, I'll give them that. But the, uh, the Asura Pro 2 does not come with a braided cable. It only comes with a standard USB cable, which looks and feels cheap. So yeah, again, too expensive for what you're getting for your, uh, for your money's worth. So yeah, four out of 10, maybe five out of 10 at a push if I'm being generous, but yeah, not recommended.